Ridley Scott tells historian who called out Napoleon errors to get a life. We'll say it's about feckin' time. Feckin'. What the heck is feckin'? <laughs> if he ever wins an Oscar. Now, guys, you, you no, that's, no. No, Ridley, what are you doing, man? You can't wave your finger at the uh, Academy and say, guys, it's about effing time I win one. Here's my movie, Napoleon. This is should be. This is a historical epic. Of course, I got to get nominated, right? I, it's about time I get an Oscar for this. It's like, no, you can't. You can't pressure them like that. Uh, I know that really, Scott. I appreciate the fact that, due to his age, and his experience working in the industry, that he's got no time for BS anymore. He doesn't, right? Uh, but something about this. These quotes rubs me a little bit the wrong way. Okay, yeah, I saw the video of uh, the historian on YouTube calling out the inaccuracies in the uh, Napoleon trailer. Uh, Napoleon trailer reaction by historian, right? Uh, I watched that because I, I like uh, history buffs and stuff like that. Um, real history. And, and there's a couple of them that... Posted, like, hey, if that's your bread and butter, that's your niche. You know history. So uh, they go into, like, movies and stuff and say, okay, well, this this happened and this uh, thing was real and this didn't really happen. And I appreciate that stuff. Guys, it's, it's a Hollywood movie. Uh, of course they're going to sensationalize things. But some of the things are valid. Like, yeah, Napoleon never shot at the pyramids or anything like that. But apparently that does happen in the trailers, or happens in the movie. He was never there for the beheading of certain people, but in the movie, I guess he's going to be. Um, I cut it a little bit of slack. Um, but Napoleon is another movie that's coming out this month in 10 days, right? Or is it 10 days or is it the 22nd? It's just. There's no buzz. There's no buzz for this, man. And it sucks because I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Vanessa Kirby does in this. Because uh, uh, she's one of the front runners to be our uh, Sue Storm, right? Um, and I liked her in the Mission Impossible movies. Um, I want to see, I hear good things about what she's doing in this. Uh, but let's listen to what some of the uh, quotes are. Uh, yeah, N Napoleon didn't shoot the pyramids. The film's trailer depicted as much during the peak of Scott's interpretation of the Battle of the Pyramids. Uh, he said that Marie Antoinette... Oh, so that's uh, very cropped for her hair. I don't care about hair design. If that's off, whatever. Like, that stuff doesn't bother me. But if you're going to say that he shot the pyramids when he didn't kind of thing, people, who, casual people of history will watch something from pop culture and say, they'll adopt that as the new telling of history. And that's how we get things like uh, the Mandela effect. People just remembered it wrong because they see things that were wrong. And I wouldn't say get a life <laughs> to that. Uh, that's what I mean by Ridley Scott's uh, attitude towards like hardlining BS. It's like, get a life. It's like, what are you talking about? This is life. You made a movie about Napoleon. You think you would have consulted historians about it. And what are you, what are you trying to say? That you you went to a, uh, a historian and they said, no, they didn't shoot the pyramids. No, I like it anyway. So I'll put it in the movie. Disregard the history. So what? You're making a movie about a historical character that you don't really care about the history of is what you're admitting, Ridley. So then why did you make the movie in the first place? Oh, because I want to win an Oscar? You see how I don't like these two quotes put together? Because it becomes pompous. It becomes arrogant from Ridley Scott. Uh, I can't defend you anymore by having that hard line of cutting through BS when you put these two things side by side because it just makes you look like an arrogant, pompous prick, Ridley. Uh, an entitled, entitled pompous, arrogant. <laughs> uh, who believes here that he deserves to win an Oscar. And that doesn't sit well with a whole lot of people, that kind of arrogance. Such arrogance! All right, so 
Whether or not Napoleon launches a, uh, Scott back into the Oscar race remains to be seen. The 85-year-old, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's got years under his belt, guys. He's been an, uh, uh, nominated for Oscars three times for director of The Martian, Thelma Louise, and Gladiator. He should have gotten it for Gladiator. Gladiator. I want to watch Gladiator with you guys. It was, whew, yeah, we need to watch that. Um, plus, once more for Best Picture Producer on The Martian. But he's never won the trophy. Even when Gladiator claimed the Oscar uh, for Best Picture in 2000, it was Steven Soderbergh who won for Traffic. Yeah, and uh, I like Traffic because Benicio Del Toro, it was so heartbreaking what happened with um, Michael Douglas's daughter in that too. Like that scares the living crap out of me. But directing wise, I thought that, yeah, it should, Gladiator was a better executed film. Uh, anyway, it's done. Um, he goes on to say, uh, with Joaquin, we can rewrite the goddamn film. Because it's uh, he's uncomfortable, uh, and that's what kind of happened with Napoleon. The director also shared, we unpicked the film to help him focus on the Bonaparte, who Bonaparte was. I had to respect that because what was being said was incredibly constructive. It was all made to grow bigger. So what are you saying? What are you saying? That because Joaquin was uncomfortable with the way that you would wrote Bonaparte based on historical evidence. You changed it so that Joaquin would feel comfortable doing it. So you changed the essence of what Napoleon was. You were, you were, you're admitting it there. That, what do you mean, get a life? It's almost like you've fabricated. Like, this is bad press. This is bad press for Napoleon. Um, guys, I expect, I, I was, I'm looking forward to this movie. Um, this is a bad article. This is bad timing. Um, if I were producers on this movie, I'd be like, guys, can we bury this article, please? Can we get this one away right now? Don't don't have this one come out before the movie, please. <laughs> That's the way I would look at it. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about Ridley Scott's comments about Napoleon? Are you still looking forward to it? Do you want to see it? I do. I do. And I don't really care too much if it's historically accurate. To the points that things get sensationalized about the character and stuff, if things get changed, um, I know it, that sounds a little bit counter to what I was saying about it trying to be historical accurate as a direct, but that's pertaining to the direction of the movie of somebody trying to craft the story together. Um, again, I'll look to those cues of the story structure as a payoff with the character arcs as to what this movie is trying to achieve. Um, yes, I agree with the initial sentiment that if I want to learn about history, I agree with Ridley Scott that I can go to those guys, the historians, and I find value in watching their uh, breakdowns of trailers of old movies and stuff and saying that this is not how it really went. Um, I find value in, in both the movie that they're, talking about and the their reactions to it i find value in that that's that's entertainment guys that's that's what it's all about and i i respect that i just don't i don't know really scott's uh passionate about it all right that's all i have for, for today yeah that's all i have um our glass says it's going to get really bad if it proves that Bill and Ted's depiction of Napoleon is more accurate. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, with the, with the, with the ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to see this kind of early frustration from uh, like things getting under Napoleon's skin and make him getting short with people from Joaquin Phoenix. I don't, I don't know if we're going to get that. I think we're getting more of the delusional I'm entitled to be emperor king kind of thing. Um, Cause I think it's supposed to emulate what's happening with Trump. I think it's supposed to do that, which is going to rub a lot of people the wrong way 
in the states because they don't like to have their current political situation put in their face when they're going out to see entertainment. I think that's the angle that they've gone for with that. Uh, it would be it would be nice to see a little bit of a little bit of the depiction of stuff that we know as a and that just goes to accent. Hey, this is the stuff that we saw growing up. Uh, this is the most we ever saw of Napoleon. Did he really act like that? We assume that he did. And so if you make a movie where he shoots pyramids, that's what we're going to assume that that's what he did. So don't tell me to get a life. Really. I don't appreciate it. All right. Let's go on to some hit or miss. Did Jeopardy quietly push out Mayim Bialik from 